So I'm here with Ross Radley, you know, the, the celebrity for, for all the kids fans, you know, uh, the author of, uh, of an awesome upcoming book. Um, but uh, let me, so just go ahead, uh, Ross, introduce yourself. Um, I think you said comic book. No, it's a Chronicles book. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. No problem. Hi, I'm Ross Radley. Um, the celebrity tag, I, I'm not too, I'm not 100% on that idea of being a celebrity, but if you say so, okay. Uh, but yeah, I've been a KISS fan since 1976. I've, um, you know, saw them first on the Paul N. Halloween special and um, was hooked immediately and thoroughly and have been following the band all the years ever since um, and collecting written material, uh, magazines, books, photos. Um, you know, of course, I love the music as well. I'm a musician, actually, and, you know, um, Kiss songs were some of the very first things I learned how to play on guitar and drums. Okay. So, uh, but I've been, you know, studying the band's visual um, evolution since the beginning and uh, as time went on I basically just got more interested in uh, the, the real the details of the day-to-day -day type of activity right and, and that eventually led to when um, uh, Kiss Alive Forever came out in 2002 yeah that was uh, that was one of my questions actually so yeah. uh, you know we, before we we get going uh, Ross uh, I just wanted to um, just to say a couple of words about us so that we're we're Kiss Fever Radioactive, and this is a special, you know, uh, event that we're having, being able to actually have you with us uh, to talk about your upcoming book. And, uh, you know, the thing is that we wanted to actually spread the news on this awesome product that uh, it's about to be launched. You're going to tell me when, but I think it's going to be around February, March next year. So, um, you know, the things we wanted to do is uh, uh, Kiss Fever Radioactive is kind of a spin-off of, of uh, Kiss Fever, you know, a very famous fan scene in Argentina that is dated like more than 30 years ago. And uh, we came up with a radio show where we're trying to, as I said before, reach not only Latin American fans, but also, you know, U.S., Canada, Australia, and European fans. And... Um, mm -hmm. We're very, we're very, very glad to have you with us. And one of the first things that, that, that I wanted to ask you, how did you, how did you get into KISS? This is in the 70s, so did you see them at the beginning, 73, 74, 75? Just tell us about it. Sure. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the first time I saw them, um, sort of, you know, other than just a photo, uh, was on Paul and Halloween special. But I think I saw them before that, uh, my, my sister had a boyfriend who had um, a Kiss poster. He had, the, he had um, I think it was the, uh, the, the Destroyer poster with the glitter background. Oh, yes. With the okay. four faces in the corner and the center one. Okay. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure that was the poster, or at least that's what my memory tells me. It could be a different one. But what I remember seeing them and being, you know, kind of perplexed as to what it was I was seeing. I, I wasn't quite sure if this was... Um, you know, uh, Batman, Superman, kind of superhero guys. Superheroes, or, exactly. Uh, or, 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 you know, rock stars, because, you know, nobody nobody looked like that. So, um, and I was only about, you know, eight or nine or something like that. So, um, but when I saw them on the Paul and Halloween special, and I did, I don't have any memories of knowing that they were going to be on there. Okay. And, you know, I don't remember anticipating them being on there. I just watched it because it was a Halloween special. The show, that's and, right. You know, and I just watched it. And so when I saw them, um, and, you know, then it clicked, okay, well, this is a rock and roll band, but they, they look like this, and they move and act like this. And um, I was just fascinated. You know how you know how it is, man. It's just oh, yes. such an impact. Um, it's, and it's really hard to describe, of course, um, how, how it sort of affects you. But it affected me, and from right then, I had to go out and get, um, I went to, um, uh, it was, it's called a Walgreens um, here in, in in the States. It's a, a drugstore, okay? Right, right, um, right. Just a little uh, con uh, convenient type store. So they had a little record collection there, and, um, and I guess even though I saw them in, um, you know, October of 76, for whatever reason, 
it must have taken me almost a year before I went out and got an album because Love Gun was already out okay. at the time when we went there. And my sister was trying to to say, you need to get Love Gun. Love Gun's better. <laughs> and I put, I'm, I'm holding them both up, and I see Destroyer, and I see Love Gun. It's the only two they had in this little, they just had this little bin of albums of everybody. Okay. So I'm holding them, she's going, Love Gun's the best. And she's like really, really insistent. This is the one you need to get. Trust me, this is the best. And I was really just a, a, a punk little brother, and I just really wanted to piss her off, so I chose the other one. <laughs> you, took, you took Destroyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just, just to spite her, really. That's how stupid oh, I was. Oh, that's it. funny. And, uh, so, yeah, took Destroyer home. I remember putting it on the turntable. We had a, we had a record player in the living room, so everybody, my mom and my brother and my sister were listening, and I put it on, and you know how the beginning of the album starts with that, yeah, uh, um, that radio broadcast, mm -hmm. and it sounds like somebody doing dishes or something, yeah. yeah, and it's not anything to do with music, and they're all looking at me like, what, what, what is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know what that is. Uh, but then once it started, <laughs> that's it. That's it forever. That's, that's what I wanted. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and it was just, you know, it was so exciting. And the few times that I got to see them on TV was just more and more exciting. Mm -hmm. and I finally mm -hmm. saw them in 79 um, on the Dynasty Tour okay. uh, here in Houston. And, um, I mean, if it wasn't bad enough already, it, it was just that much stronger to see them in concert and yeah. just, you know, really, really uh locked it in for sure well, you you really you really got into the band you know when they were basically at the top you know at 77 yeah. 78 and then you know uh it, it, us in in argentina it's funny because you know we got into kiss most of us you know the, the diehard fans uh, 79 with dynasty and uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna wonder why but yeah you know we we didn't have access to the previous records you know, a destroyer, love gun, you know, the first three, even alive, only a few people, you know, they had access to it. But, you know, the same happened to me when I saw them on TV for the I Was Made For Loving You or, or Sure Now Something video, that was immediate, you know, I was hooked for life. And it's basically the same story that we share, you know, I'm turning 50 next week. And for all of us, we're in the same boat, you know, and, uh, and then we started going backwards. So then we started to revisit the previous records and we yeah. said, oh, this is not only pop, this is actually rock and roll, you know, and uh, because, yeah. you know, uh, when we got into I Was Made For Love With You, we, which was huge in, in South America, same as in Australia, you know, um, yeah. uh, records like Dynasty and Mass, they, they, they were such big hits. So, uh, Ross, uh, how did you come up with this idea of, of creating uh, this book. Okay, uh, so as I followed them through the years, uh, th there was a lot of misinformation about um, when things were done. Uh, you'd read different sources, and and you know they didn't always agree about when things happened. And so I, I just was, I just got more and more curious for information. Okay. For detailed, accurate information. So by the time um, in two thousand two, when Kiss Alive Forever came out mm -hmm. uh, by Kurt Gooch and Jeff Sue's. Uh, Great book. That, Great book. Yeah, absolutely. That was Man. the spark. That was um, that the, the research those guys did uh, was so thorough. And, um, you know, um, it, it was what is what set me on a path to go, OK, well, now I've got all this information that I've done from um, done on my own. And now I've got this incredible um, resource for putting things where they belong, and um, I, I kind of like turned turn the heat up on my own research in terms of contacting photographers and asking questions and trying to trying to solidify a timeline of the visual um, record that I had of the okay. different photos. Were, so you, just, were you were you were you a big collector of? Uh of uh, photos or, or books or, or uh, information magazines? Yes. Um, there were guys that, you know, would put me to shame, but I did the best I could with, you know, the expendable income that I had, which wasn't much. Okay. But 
Um, but one thing that I did, I think that was different than most other collectors, is that I really, really was studying the details of every photo that I saw. So the the changes in the makeup design, uh, you know, the different things that they would wear, costuming, guitars, the lights, the you know, the monitors, uh, every detail in the photo. So the visual, uh, the visual aspect of the band was actually really really significant for you so you were like uh, very attracted by all the visual thing that came along with kiss well yeah but that what i'm saying is um i think you know obviously they're probably the most visually uh fascinating band you can think of yeah um but the visuals were the the clues okay 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 gotcha. and my interest was trying to figure out where they belonged. Mm -hmm. So I would go through, you know, uh, Kiss Special magazines, and I'd see photos that, um, you know, take for example the Alive era. Yeah. When when we think about the Alive era, uh, it's not just from when the album came out, right? Right. Right. The album came out, you know, in September of '75. Yeah. But uh, the Alive look is all the way back to May of 75, when the photo for the cover, and then when they first started wearing those costumes, right? Yeah, yeah. So again, the costuming is is sort of, that's where the, the borders are placed. Correct. Right? Yes. So even though technically they were wearing their live costumes while they were on the Dress to Kill tour, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When they played Kobo in 75 and yeah. recorded the Alive album, technically, that's the Dress to Kill tour. Correct. But when you see them in those photos, nobody calls that Dress to Kill. True. It's alive. So it's alive. Yeah. It's That's the alive true. look, right? It's right. the costume for the alive look. Same thing happened with Destroyer. Uh, the costumes for Destroyer were actually first photographed in January of 76. Correct. The album didn't come out till March, and they didn't wear them in costume until July. So... <laughs> <laughs> so all those little puzzles, right? A lot of the crossover was really interesting to me. Okay. And it blew me away, for example, that they were, uh, when I found out that they were playing um, in Europe, 76, yeah. they would play songs from Destroyer, like Detroit Rock City, but they're wearing their live costumes. True. That totally blew, that blew my mind the first True. time. True, yeah, right? exactly. When they went to London, uh, the, there's a... There's a famous interview in the in the dressing room, and that's right. actually they play Detroit Rock City in the Alive costumes. Actually, that's true. Right. Yeah, yeah there's, true. there's footage of them. I think I'm pretty sure it's from um, from Germany. Yeah. From and um, they're playing. They're you know performing deep, uh, Detroit Rock City, but of course it's the Alive show. True. And so that when I realized that that was that was even more of a reason for me to figure out all right when exactly did things happen because it's a lot of confusion so uh the kiss alive forever book was the thing that helped me um take the catalog of information that I had and and kind of like put things in their proper place mm -hmm. right was and that a pro was that a project that you studied just just yourself by your own yeah. or you were working with uh, another fan or a friend of yours no no i was doing it on my own um and over over a few years there was, I, I know that there's still a website um trying to think of the guy's name who runs it it's uh the kiss forum which is a uh, a photo um sort of an archive of photos per year mm -hmm. and um a lot of people would post photos in there Okay. And I would go on there and just, you know, help out with information and say this photo was taken by this photographer at this place and time. Okay. And, um, and from there, I sort of developed a, um, a reputation of having, you know, this research done and this information. Mm -hmm. And, I, mm -hmm. you know, I was interested. It was a sharing thing. Uh, somebody may go, well, I took this photo, you know, on the Love Gun tour. And, you know, again, thanks to uh, Kiss Alive Forever, we were able to figure out exactly where and when those things happened. So that was so, the spark, actually. That, yeah, uh, definitely. Kiss Alive Forever book. was just invaluable in um, setting me on a direct path. And I remember going to a Kiss convention, I believe it was um, 
in early 2003 after the book had already come out in 2002 and asking Kurt and Jeff, they did a, they did a Q and a session and I was asking them if they had any plans to do another book that would fill in the gaps like okay. with book sessions, recording sessions, all the other stuff. Cause there's a lot more than just concerts that Kiss Absolutely. was doing. Absolutely. So, and this is, this is what the diehard fans want. This yeah. is what we want to see, right? So um, it's, it's, it's kind of you know it's kind of comical because as much information as as in Kiss Alive Forever, somehow it's not enough. Right? That's right, exactly. <laughs> There's more, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. It's just a sickness we have. So um, yeah. uh, anyway, so I remember asking them, them that question, and they sort of laughed, and you know, were like, "Well, we kind of just we just finished this one book that took us seven years to put together." <laughs> <laughs> not thinking of doing another one right now which of course i understood completely okay so um anyway so that that sort of told me that all right i need to keep doing some research and uh fill in the gaps and figure out when things happen and over the next few years i did that um as i kept doing that and i kept sort of a presence online mm -hmm. uh with information um again i sort of developed just people started to know me as somebody who had this other information right. with the folks. Right. So, um, so and with that, I, I guess that you had access to, you know, different sources from different countries and, and maybe yeah. different photographer, photographers that they were sending yeah. you stuff, right? Yeah, there was, uh, when, because of, uh, you know, the, uh, the database online, all the, you could do research online, which was so much easier than, you know, bless, Kurt Gooch and Jeff Sue's hearts, they had to travel around, right. you know, and actually, you know, do things the old fashioned way. But, uh, you know, as, as, as uh, archives began uh, becoming available online, well, I just kept researching online right. and I would, uh, there was all these photo agencies like Getty Images and Corbis yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. these, and they would have all these photos right. there. And so I would, I would do the research through that. I would contact photographers personally. You know, some, a lot of times they'd have a, a page. The, the photographer would have an actual mm -hmm. website that you could contact them on. And so I would contact them and ask them questions, email them questions. So it was that was, uh, oh. Ross, that was basically when you actually decided to start really working on putting all this material together in a book. So that, that must have been part of your methodology. So you were you know, collecting things and trying to put them in a time slot. So how, 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 how did that work with you? How, how was it? What was your methodology? The, the idea of the book actually didn't happen until um, probably about 10 years after, after that. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. During that time um, from like 2003 to 2013 was just, you know, more and more research. I wasn't seriously thinking about doing a book. Okay. Um, in 2012, I think it is, I helped uh, Ken Sharp out with the Nothing to Lose book, which I see on your shelf over there. There you go, yes. <laughs> All right. So I just, I just reached out to him and said, look, um, uh, I know you're doing this book, and I'd love to offer my services you know, free of charge. I just want to help try to get the photo information correct and help you with anything you need about photos. And so... Mm -hmm. He's, you know, just one of the nicest people you can oh, yeah. ever yeah. know. He's, he's great. He's great. And so I helped him with that and um, uh, did some photo editing in the book, and, and including the actual cover of the book is, is a Photoshop compilation that I put together. Oh, okay. So, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just, I'll tell you that story quickly because it doesn't take long. Um, the original photo that you see on that cover. The so let me picture, let me let me bring it let me bring it here. So yeah, have it. So this is uh, this is what we're talking about. There you go. There's nothing to lose right there. Yeah. Open it up to um, uh, the the first spread where you see that same photo but but cropped. Go okay. and open the book. You'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Just like the first few pages. You'll see that same photo on a two-page spread. Okay, now notice you can't see Peter's face. You can only see half of it, right? Correct. Yes. That, look on the cover again. Oh, yeah, it's there. You see the difference? Yeah, absolutely. That's because, yeah, the original see, photo. Right there. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
the original photo is that that two page spread that you see where you can't see Peter's face. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. the uh, the the front three guys. Well, it's funny. Were, there's a, there's some there's something there with with Peter, right? Yeah, it's just half his face. So I, a different <laughs> okay. photo from the same photo session right. by this photographer, Lynn D'Alessio. Yeah. Lynn D'Alessio is the guy who took those photos. Mm -hmm. So I took a different photo, actually two different photos, and created the picture you see of Peter, where his head is kind of tilted down. and his Yeah, hands with, are... the, with the sticks. Right. Yeah. That, that was, that's a totally different photo. That's actually two different photos. Okay. So I put that together... And okay. sent that to Ken, and that's what they chose for the cover. Well, this is awesome story. I love it. I love it. It was a lot, it was great. I was very excited about it. So, um, um, anyway, so when I, when I got together doing that for Ken, that's when I really decided, you know what, I need to go ahead and make an effort to try to do the book that I that would cover the first ten years, right? Like nothing nothing to lose covers, you know. The, the beginning up to yeah, 75. 75 yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wanted to cover the first 10 years because, first of all, it's basically, you know, it's 10 years and it's the original makeup period. It's the magic, Ross. That's the, the well, magic. That's, <laughs> that's the how magic. I feel too. No, and, and listen, I want, I want to really make a point here to say it's not that when they took the make, makeup off that somehow uh, it was worse or something, mm -hmm. okay? It was a different, was different. kind of magic because I still love the band throughout yeah. the '80s and the '90s, right? Yeah, same here. Uh, yeah, hmm. but a different thing, and it's and it's you know, uh, I think if you ask the band themselves and you read interviews with them and they talk about the first ten years, they use the word magic a lot. Yeah, absolutely. They, they yeah. just do. So well, actually, um, actually, you know, when they when they reunited in '96 during the uh, press conference, you right. know, uh, you know, the, the magic, magic is, is back. back. <laughs> the magic is back, absolutely. So listen, and again, um, not saying that you know once Peter left that the magic disappeared. Hmm. Right, I don't feel that way at all. I think Eric was part of the magic, and I think Vinny was part of the magic too. Right. True. True. So that's what to me those first ten years. And I tried to figure out what would be the the easiest way to sort of explain those first 10 years. And to me, the word magic is the best word. Yeah. If you're going to like condense it down to one thing, yeah, it's magic. Well, you know, because, you know, if you go just by the definition of, of magic, you know, it's something that you can't explain. Right. And uh, and this is something that happened to all of us Kiss fans when you were saying that you were hooked, you know, uh, because of your of your sister you know, and stuff same with us it's a, the, you can't explain you you're hooked for life I agree. yeah it's it's just something that you know you could spend a lot of time trying to you know find yeah, other right. words um and i can go into detail i can say okay you know you've got their uh, their individual personalities and how the makeup and the costumes are an extension of that and you know the way the the look of the band and the um, the the sound of the band make perfect sense together, right? Um, how great the songs are, um, you know how great you know great a drummer Peter is, how great a guitar player, you know yeah. all these different things you yeah. can kind of like put on a piece of paper and write them all down. But in the end, you just kind of go, look, man, it was just magic. It was That's the right. perfect. The nation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's it. That's a best summary. Absolutely. Yeah. So you are. Uh, so then you you are kind of that. You had that spark after talking to Ken, and you say, okay, I would like to put together, you know, the book that every fan would love to have. Right. Well, no, I, I would change that. I would. I would. Um, because I don't think that this book is actually for every fan. Uh, here's why. Um, this book has way more detail than I think a lot of a lot of the Kiss fans are not necessarily that interested in every single costume detail. You know, okay. they, 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 there's different levels, right? Yes, now, absolutely. You, you and I, you and I, you know, obviously share a certain uh, point of view, but there are a lot of other Kiss fans that aren't just as sick as we are. <laughs> true. true, it's true. I, I, I always pointed out to like uh, Star Wars, okay? Yeah. Uh, for me, 
Uh, I love Star Wars. I am a Star Wars fan, but I am not as deep a Star Wars fan right. as I know some other Star Wars fans are. Right? True, true. I don't have all the stuff memorized. Yeah. I don't have I don't have a a book, for example, that shows you the uh, blueprint for the Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't go down to that level. Right. Right. But for Kiss, I do. You do. Right. Right. So that's that's the difference. So I I would say that there are probably a lot of Kiss fans that, um, in terms of the information that's in this book, it's way more okay. than than they are necessarily interested in. Now they may enjoy the book because it's going to have, of course, loads of incredible photos they've never seen, mm -hmm. and it's going to be well designed, right? Creative and fun, absolutely, uh, and all these other things, but. Yeah, we're uh, gonna we're gonna go into specifics of the book because actually I think this is really really worth it. Uh, you know, from what I've, from what we've been talking and what I, what I've been reading about all the preparation of of the material that it, that we're gonna be able to find in the book, this is absolutely amazing. As you said before, for all those fans that are actually into the details and you know the never seen before uh, photos. I think this is definitely the way to go. So, um, so then you decide to come up with a book, and then how how do you start coordinating things? So you start, you know, putting photos together. Uh, you, you're saying that there's a lot of information. This is interesting because many people think that the book it's only photos. Right. Uh, so no, that, no. that so there you go. So it's uh, up to you. So you go ahead. <laughs> yes, it's, it's an easy mistake, I think, to make and a misunderstanding people have simply because it's easier to, you know, to just uh, kind of like focus on the photos. But in the same way that Kiss Alive Forever is loaded with information, right? So if you hold up a, a two-page spread from Kiss Alive Forever, you're going to see lots of text and a couple of small photos. Sure. Right? Yeah. I don't I don't even think anywhere in the book that there is an actual full page photo. No, no that's not right. true. No. So to me, that book is more of a um, an information resource with some, you know, they have cool photos in there, but it's much smaller. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you contrast that to say um, uh, Lynn Goldsmith's book. Yeah. Right? That book is a photo book. That's right. There's there, no, there's, there's only there, text. There's only text in the first two pages. That's it. Yeah, it's just a little bit of text, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's sprinkled throughout. Um, right behind your behind you there is sealed with a kiss by Lydia. Yeah, by Lydia. Yeah. Now, to me, that book is not a textbook or a photo book. It is a beautiful blend of the two. Correct. I agree. Fully agree with you. Um. Uh. History book, right? Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Every page has text, pretty much, and every photos. page is open with photos. Right, right. That, that is where that's magic. If you're trying to understand what you're going to get, you're yeah. going to get that's information it. plus the photos. Okay. On equal basis, it okay. won't be to one side or the other. Okay. But yes, because you know, on online, for example, on Facebook, um, when I make a post, obviously, so it gets noticed. I put a photo there. Mm -hmm. If all I did was just type in some text, most people would pass it up and wouldn't pay Absolutely. any attention. To it. Yeah, you're right. Yes. So yeah. that might be part of it too. Okay. Why people think it's a photo book, but I'm, you know, I've tried in in any of these interviews, I've tried to explain as, to the best of my ability that it's a, it's a balance between the two, and that's what we're trying to make. Did you me. did you have um, uh, people? helping you out with the information or it was part of your collection uh that so how the how did that work right um you know lots of books the same kind of books that are on your shelves or on mine years of collecting magazines and uh newspaper clippings and stuff like that okay and of course again there's um online uh sources that you can go for newspaper articles and mm -hmm. things like that okay uh, so yeah uh, it's it's sort of taking all the resources that have been available, uh, like I like I'll go back to 2013 when I decided you know to to make the book. 
I had already gathered up all that information and chronicled it, put it in order by date, right? So I have, an, I have a database where in the folder with the information is the, is the photos that go with that information. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a well, big man, database. This is, you know, I, I, as, as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, the amount of hours that, uh, that you have put into this, this is massive. This is huge. It's unbelievable. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I mean, it's if you just say, if you just took it to say, okay, 2013, uh, from then to now, which is five years, just you know, the amount of time that I've spent into it is uh, probably the equivalent of, I don't know, say maybe um, 15 or 20 years of a um, of a regular nine to five job. And were you uh, all the all all that time working on that? Were you were you kind of um, were you bored? Were you kind of? Did you feel like 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 a war, like a job? You know, it was was it too yeah. tedious for you, or you get you kept the passion flowing all the time? Yeah, the the exact opposite of tedious. Um, it's fascinating, and it's sort of like an archaeologist. And people like Kurt Gooch and Jeff Sues and Julian Gill. Yeah, uh, these guys who do the that kind of research. I, I get. I can only assume that you know if you were to talk to uh, an archaeologist and you ask them, isn't it tedious to, to go into you know okay, this gotcha. big hole and start dusting off for, trying to find bone? Right. They're like, no, it's fascinating. You know, that's that's. I think I find that's a perfect you know analogy to that. You know, I never thought about it like this, but this, you're you're so right. That's true. It, That's true. It's, it's, it's just the, the, the love for the subject matter is what um, inspires you and drives you to find. So you're willing to go through lots of stuff that doesn't matter just to find one little nugget that right. you didn't know. Exactly. That's, yeah. That's, that, that's, that's how it is. So, um, yeah. uh, no, it's, uh, you know, all the research and the time spent. Um, and I, I would I would add to that. Um, one of the things that I've spent a lot of time on, not just researching, but also uh, the photo editing um, and restoration part of the job. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when I would uh, contact a photographer, lots of times, most of the time, whatever they had in their archives um, had been damaged over the years. Mm -hmm. They haven't necessarily kept things uh, safe and clean. Right. So if they had negatives and um, they were nice enough to, to sh mail them to me for me to scan, they were, they were just, there were so many scratches and uh, problems with it mm -hmm. that it would take hours to restore them. Yeah, and luckily we, we have, you know, here in my, on my computer, I have, you know, the software, mm -hmm. the digital mm -hmm. editing software mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So that there's been, countless hours no, just that's doing so that. so time consuming sometimes you know you try to restore i don't know a family picture whatever and it takes you know about an hour i can't imagine this you know this is this is terrible do, do you have the uh rolling stone magazine kiss cover here handy yeah no i don't no okay. i don't i have a i have some boxes here because you know i have to put up stuff on the walls but i don't have it handy why nope. why um I know I, I have it on my show. It's not everybody knows what it is. You know the the Rolling Stone magazine cover from yeah. 2014, right? Yes. That that image that they used on the cover is a is a photo restoration of a poster that I did. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So uh, the original poster um, was had been folded. It was it was you you know the Swedish magazine uh, poster magazine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It had been folded. And it, so it had all so you see the cracks there. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And it had been uh, someone had cut the corners off for mm -hmm. some reason. They, they cut the corners off mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it had scratches and it was just terrible shape. Right. But um, and you, when you scan it, you have to take a flatbed scanner. Uh, that's only about like this size, it's like nine. Uh, I think it's nine by yeah. 11. Yeah. And you, you lay it on there one piece at a time. And scan it, and then you slide the poster over, and you scan and another. Then you start to put things together, right? Yeah, it's like a puzzle. You end up with about twelve pieces, okay. and you have to take and digitally 
overlap them Mm -hmm. and put them together to make one thing. Then you have to go through and digitally remove all this, all the scratches, right? So I had done that for that poster. And back when I was working with Ken on nothing to lose, um, Finn Costello um, had let, let him use some of the photo, some of his photos in the book. And so a lot of, Finn Costello's photos he didn't actually have in his archives. Uh-huh. So I, I mailed him a, a, a disc of photos that I had collected and scanned like that poster and uh, mailed it to him back in 2013. And um, by 2014, they used it on the cover. They Rolling wow. Stone contacted Finn Costello and he used that, that he restoration. Used the, he used the yours. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, so... Um, that's just an example of, um, you know, for whatever reason, we, they can't find the original uh, negative or transparency for that particular image. Right. But because, of, you know, with uh, Photoshop and things, you can restore them and make them look really good. So that's been a big, big part of, of the time spent um, uh, preparing photos for, for my book. Right. As well as I did the same thing for uh, Nothing to Lose. Um, and I'm trying to think. There was something else I did. Oh, um, I, I, I contributed photos for the Destroyer Resurrected uh-huh. CD. Yes. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, so that's a big, big part of the time that I've spent in the last, you know, five years or so. So you were, um, you know, after all this work that you've been doing, um, did did that make you uh, work closer with with uh, with uh, Kiss or with management or, or or with other people in the circle that they were putting stuff together? Did you start to inter to kind of exchange things with people? Uh, not not necessarily. I wouldn't say that with the uh, within the Kiss circle. I mean, um, you know, obviously I worked with Ken Sharp mm-hmm. for that book, and um, um, I've you know. Help uh, Spiro Papadopoulos. Yeah, yeah, Spiro. Yeah, Spiro. We all know who that is. Yeah, Papadopoulos. Yeah. Think. Um. Anyway, um, I've helped him out with a few things. You know, looking for photos and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Keith Larue is familiar with the book. Okay. Uh, you know, he he knows about the book. Uh, Gene knows about the book, of but course. I mean, I haven't had any contact with Gene in terms of, you know. Uh, any, any one-on-one type of thing. Did so, you, now that you mentioned that, and, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're kind of taking a bit of a branch now, but this is interesting. Uh, we're going to go back to the, to the book, you know, in, in just a while. But did you, did you have any issues with, uh, with KISS, uh, legal issues with them, you know, uh, uh, because of the fact of using some of the, yeah, I don't know, you haven't used the logo, right? So, uh, and you haven't used, you know, the, the, uh, the, you know, the iconic, you know, makeup and stuff. Right. So yeah, yeah. Because, because of that, there's, there's no, uh, you know, there's no issue. Okay. Uh, and the legal issue. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the, just so people understand a, um, a book cover when you're, when you're selling a book and you use trademark material on the cover of the book without, you know, licensing it. Um, then they have, you know, reason to come after you. Absolutely, uh, the, yeah. The photos in the book are, you just have to license them from the photographer. Correct. Mm-hmm. Whoever, or whoever, whoever happens to own the, the license. The rights. To the, Correct. So the yeah. so photographer doesn't actually uh, own it and somebody else owns it. You know, photographers die like everybody else and somebody else ends up with the rights to the photo. So that's, you know, what I've done is, put together licensing agreements with the photographers that are used in the book. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, now that you mentioned the book, so um, tell us just a little bit about um, how big it is. You know, uh, I, I, I'm assuming that it's going to be, you know, quite heavy uh, yeah. number of pages, you know, um, how, how is it? Okay. Um, it's the same dimensions as the Lynn Goldsmith book. Oh, okay. Well, so go ahead and hold that up again, and it'll it'll help, I think, to, to have a, to have an idea. Okay. Yeah. So it's the same dimensions as that, which is nine by twelve. Okay. Now, 
Lynn's book is about 300 something pages. Yeah, 340. Yeah. Yeah. Um, add, add about another 200 pages to that, and you'll have magic. So, thinker. <laughs> yes, baby. Yes. <laughs> I love it. It's going to be heavy duty. I love so, it. Um, and it'll be a hardcover book. Now, Lynn's book is a hardcover book with padding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> but mine's going to be a hardcover book, like uh, uh, sealed with the kits, right? Okay. Okay. Hardcover book. So and you have the, the, the magic, <laughs> you know, awesome uh, design with, with right. the uh, talismans and uh, all the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You got the icons and the, the cover that, you know, uh, you, you can see on the website. Mm -hmm. Now, the cover will be really cool because... The, the metal studs that go around the border yeah. will actually be embossed and, and foil um, printed. Oh, my God. It look like actual metal studs. Oh, my God. This is crazy. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love um, it. And the logo itself and the, uh, and the icons will be embossed, too. Wow. You'll like to be able to, you know, it'll be, a, it won't just be a flat image. It'll be, you'll be able to touch the texture of it Beautiful. and the, the leather look will actually look like leather too okay. it won't be real leather but it'll look it like looks leather. Like, okay awesome yeah so 550 pages you know lots of information you know uh, uh never seen before photos um yeah. so tell us about um what was your collaboration with different photograph photographers so uh the the who or if you can mention a few who actually um, provided you with the most uh, amazing or, or shocking material? I, I think if I had to pick the top one, uh, it would be Rayanne Rubenstein. She okay. is the photographer. Most people aren't, I don't think most KISS fans realize, she's the one who took the red background photo session um, in 74, which is the, the promo poster in the first KISS album. Yeah. Right, that that image, you know, where Peter's got the dagger. Yes, yes, right? the red, the red course, background. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. all the photos of Paul with the band of yes. makeup, right? Yeah, yeah, the smoke, you know, with the smoke behind and all the stuff. Oh my her, God! Her is Rayanne Rubenstein. She was the photographer who did that. Okay. She's also the photographer who did the photo session for the People magazine cover in 1980. Oh wow! Same photographer, okay. right? With uh, so, with uh, Eric, you mean? With Eric, exactly. Right. Wow. First time anybody saw what he looked like was on that right. People magazine cover, right? So um, I had been in contact, contact with her over the phone for probably about four years, trying really, really hard to get her to uh, show me her archives. Now, she hadn't digitized her archives, which is the truth for many photographers. Of course, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now... By now, a lot of photographers have done that because it's easier to do. And nowadays, everything's, you know, online. So they have already scanned their images and they have an archive. Um, but even just four years ago, that wasn't common. Mm -hmm. So I, wor I tried really hard to get her to do that. I couldn't get her to do it. She just didn't have time ever to, to do all that. So back in October, wow, it's already, it's already been a year October of last year, I drove to Nashville, where she lives, mm -hmm. on a 12-hour drive. I drove there, and I spent the night um, in her studio. She had a pull-down bed, what they call a Murphy bed, mm -hmm. in her studio. Her studio is just basically like a huge warehouse, okay. loaded with filing cabinets and um, photo equipment, the, the big umbrellas with the lights and all that stuff i mean it's just a huge place and so um i had to go through her files and find the actual kiss negatives oh wow <laughs> yeah and that that took a while and then once i found them i i started scanning them while i was staying there okay um and i got about halfway through because she all totaled she had about i think it's five thousand photos oh, something like that Wow. Uh, Whoa. So, uh, so I didn't get them all done because I was only there for two days. <laughs> uh, so I came, I came back um, in November around, Chris, uh, around uh, Thanksgiving time, and I was able to get some more done then. Mm -hmm. But because of different circumstances, I wasn't able to get near as much done. Um, and so uh, 
thankfully, I think it was in January, I didn't have to make another trip. Um, FedEx, the rest of them to me here in Houston, and I took care of the rest of it. So the photos that the hundreds and hundreds of photos that no one's have ever, nobody's ever seen from both photo sessions um, are going to be a big part of the wow factor of this book. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, it's going to blow. Wow. I wish I could. I, I, it's so hard for me. I want to share and, and, you know, my excitement for it with everybody and say, look at what I'm talking about, but it'll have to wait till you get the book. But, but you know the fact that um, you know we're we're having this conversation now. It, this is this is awesome because it's like, uh, of course, it's not like having the book in, in your hands. But you know, having this information, it's it's essential. You know, for any kids fans to go to go crazy with this book. You know, this is something that no one has ever done before. Yeah, I, I think you might be right about that. I can't think of anybody else who is in, in terms of the photos has gone. To this, to these links, to uh, collect them all into one Absolutely. one thing. Now, with the history book, of course, you know, Kiss has their own archives. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, and you know, um, which is a different different thing altogether. And of course, with Lydia's books, she had her own photos. Of course, yeah. She didn't have to go and yeah collect photos from people. Right. So in terms of um, uh, you know going to photo resources and photographers um you know I, i'm not aware of another of another book that really has done it to this level did you uh, did you receive like photos or or material from fans oh yeah yeah and, and that's where for for example facebook has been so so helpful in turn you know people who have over time have just shared their their fan photos and look, I love the professional stuff, you know, the crystal clear, perfect lighting stuff. Of course, it's great. But for me personally, I love the fan photos. Yeah. Take it, you know, taken from the, you know, 14th row. Yeah. And, you know, you see, you see the whole stage. Absolutely. Right? You see the fans in front. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, me and too. Me too. Really it's like, uh, it's like you're there, right? It makes you part of the show, even though, you know, you... Maybe you didn't have the chance to to attend that show, but even you know, seeing a couple of photos, it, it puts you there right away. That that phrase, it puts you there, is pretty much the driving, um, the, the the point of magic. Okay, mm -hmm. I want people to feel like that they're actually in the band mm -hmm. or working for the band from the beginning all the way through. Till basically June of '83, when they finish, you know, in uh, Brazil, yeah. and they're they're done with the makeup, right? That's where the book really ends. Okay. I, I, I don't I don't I didn't feel any need to go into uh, the lick it up stuff because that that begins a new era. A new era. Yeah, absolutely. So, so now that you mentioned Brazil, uh, do you have? Um, in the book, uh, it's a nice coverage of the shows in Sao Paulo and uh, and Rio. Those massive, yeah. you know, shows in the Maracanã with 150,000 people, you know, uh, soccer stadiums. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's good stuff all the way, all the way through, all the way through. To me, those shows are some of the most fascinating. You know, it's just just a few shows in yeah. such a short amount of time exactly. with so many people yeah. and so much excitement. Yeah. And the fact that even though the band didn't really, I don't think they thought of it at the time, but the fact that that was really, that was, that was the end of that, that era. That was the end of it. That was the end of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, one of the reasons why, and I'm sure you know this, but one of the reasons why, uh, you know, there was such a big attendance to the shows is because, you know, Kiss had never been to South America before. Right. And, uh, you know, they were supposed to go to Argentina in 83 as part of the same tour. But, you know, for different reasons, you know, it, it ended up not happening. Um, there was a little bit of a political turmoil in Argentina at that time. But uh, the Kiss decided to pull the plug to, to run the shows in, in Buenos Aires. So, um, Ross, if, 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 if I asked you... Uh, about the Holy Grail, okay? What, so it could be those pics from 
from Ryan. So as you said before, from from uh, from the Sweden, uh, the Swedish uh, photographer. Uh, not sweet. She's not Swedish. You oh, talking about Ryan Rubenstein? Yes. No, she's from New York. Oh, she's from, okay. Okay, my bad. Okay, okay. Right. That that could be considered to be like the holy grail for you. Those those pics that are actually. Um, no, no, they're, they're really special and, you know, there's loads of them that people haven't seen and there's really cool, um, unique things about them. But in terms of like the Holy Grail, meaning something that is, um, uh, never been seen and, yeah. uh, nobody knows anything about, uh, I know it's going to sound really odd, but for me, I'd love to, I've never seen any photos from this event. And as far as I know, there may not exist any photos from this particular day, uh, but I'm hoping someday to find them. Uh, the filming of the Shandy video oh. um, actually is the one event in the whole 10 years um, which is has wasn't covered by a photographer. There's really? no photos of it. Really? There's no other example of something that Kiss did where they got made up in costume and they, they did something, there's no other example of them doing something without somebody, at least one, Taking photographer a photo. being there, wow. right? It's so um, even, you know, when they went out, they got dressed up and they went to um, um, Buffalo, New York to to put the uh, blood into the yeah, ink. into the ink. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. That that was just one little afternoon, a little you know, a little event. But there were photographers there. As a matter of fact, Bob Gruen, one of the most important photographers, went along on that small little trip. Right. Right. So right. it was an in, really fairly insignificant thing in terms of you know, an event that Kiss got dressed up for, right? But there was a photographer there. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, the Shandy video, um, there's no photos from there. There's a video, of course, but yeah. there's no still photos. If you go back to the other videos that they did, even going back to, of course, the, the first official videos, that promo videos they did for Come On and Love Me and Rock and Roll All Night, yeah. of course, Finn Costello was there taking photos of that, right? Mm -hmm. If you go to the videos that they did for uh, I Want You, Love Them and Leave Them, right? Yeah. And um, um, Harley Grumman. Harley Grumman. Yeah. So there were photographers there. Richard right. Aaron was one of the photographers. Neil Preston was there. Right. Yeah. And there's still photos, great photos from that whole session. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the Dynasty videos that they did for Shooting or Something and I Was Made for Loving You. Same. Again, Neil Preston was there. Bob Grumman was there. They were taking photos. But the, nothing, I, not, but nothing for Shandy. Wow. That's a. Uh... I don't know why. It's really odd. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that, you know, obviously there was tension with Peter and everything. Um, and the, he had already quit the band. So, I don't know. Maybe they were like, you know what? The yeah. mood is bad. We don't need a photographer. Let's just do the video. Yeah. Possibly that's why. But uh, it's still, even as bad as it was, uh, it's just hard for me to imagine that there wouldn't be somebody there capturing, you know, photos for use in the publications to promote Unmasked. It's true, it's true. Because, you know, now, as you said before, with uh, with Facebook and stuff, um, we we have found so many different photos of any event that KISS was part of. You know, the things that you can even imagine that there was someone taking photos at that time. So it's yeah. uh, you're right, so it's hard to believe that there's nothing, nothing at all about uh, that uh, video for, for Shandy. It's, um, yeah, that's true. That's true. Hey, uh, Ross, um, quick question. Um, well, I, I think you covered that. So why why 73 to 83? But so uh, would you ever consider coming up with, with the Magic Chronicles 2 for the non-makeup era or maybe for the reunion? Um, I don't know, just to... I was, you know, thinking about it. So we, will will there be a follow a follow up on this? You know, another another thing coming up from you. Um, normally, I, my philosophy is never say never. Mm -hmm. But for, for that particular question, the the chances of that happening for me are pretty much non-existent. Okay. I don't have I don't have the desire 
as much as I do like all that stuff, I don't have the desire to put the work in to put it all together and make it good enough for me. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to make it good enough that I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and I just don't, I I don't have the drive to do it. Okay. Okay. And there are other, there's some other projects um, that I'm wanting that I do have the desire to do after I'm done with magic. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are other things that I'd like to be able to do. So, okay. uh, not, not, you know, uh, in an infinite universe, all things are possible. Somebody said that. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah uh, but there's so much you can do and there's so much time also, right? So if you really want to invest, you're going to do it on something that you really, you know, you're hooked, you know, you, you feel passionate about it. And, uh, and yeah. uh, this, is what I, this is what I see from, you know, for, for Magic uh, 7383. So where, where do you stand now with, with the book? You're putting it together and uh, it's going printing. So tell us about it. Yeah, so we're, we're finishing up the book, uh, putting, you know, the rest of the, the spreads together. And if uh, hopefully we can get it done by, you know, like the end of December, mm-hmm. have every, everything designed and everything ready to go. And then send the files off to the printer um, at the beginning of January. And then by the end of January, they will be printed and shipped to me. And then by uh, sometime in February, hopefully the first part of, you know, the sooner the better, um, start shipping them out. Wow. Wow. So uh, I, I think that we're, we're at, a, at a point now where we can say, uh, or you can say, that this has been a huge success. So were you were you envisioning this uh, this massive you know uh, um, uh, kind of uh, I don't know how to say it. not not promotion but this this massive you know spread out of you know be, amongst the, all the Kiss fans you know it has so much power and uh, you know there were so many fans going into this I remember that you were putting like one hundred and twenty five thousand you know. Uh, you know, limit in order to, you know, to kind of move forward. And uh, it just happened, you know, things were happening really, really fast. Everybody was trying to get on board. So were you expecting this kind of success? Uh, Let's let's see here, because, you know, when I did a Kickstarter first, I did a Kickstarter campaign back in 2015, Mm -hmm. in 2015. Mm -hmm. And um, in 30 days, I was able to raise uh, forty six thousand dollars. Wow. Um, at that point, which, um, in terms of uh, crowdfunding projects, that would be considered you know, an achievement. Okay, that's yeah. that's a, that's a good amount. My goal, though, was a, I needed a hundred thousand to do the book, the way I was going to do it back then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. So because I didn't reach a hundred thousand. I didn't, I didn't get any of that money. That's how Kickstarter works. So, but it told me that there was a strong interest in this kind of a book uh, amongst the KISS community. And basically I should just continue doing what I'm doing and, um, and just, you know, keep working on the book. So um, I, I continued to do that by the time we got to 2018 um, I decided, okay, even though we're not done with the book, um, I've been um, online kind of developing a relationship in the kids community uh, for about three years. And I thought it was a good time to try, instead of doing a crowdfunding campaign like Kickstarter, I would just open up uh, the pre-orders okay. and people would just, if they trusted it enough, they would send me the money that the money. pay for the yeah. book. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. money would go to fund the book, right? Mm-hmm. And now because I was doing a, a lot of extra stuff that I wasn't doing originally, my goal was 125000 instead of just 100000 So, I, you know, I let that be known that we need this amount of money in order to do the book like this and have the bonus, the extra stuff. There's an extra book with the deluxe edition. There's a poster. There's, you know... Uh, nine by twelve um, trading cards, you know, oversized yeah, trading uh, cards. Let's uh, let's spend a couple of minutes on that, uh, Ross. So there's two different flavors. We have the standard book, you know, 550 pages, hardcover, you know, awesome stuff inside, and then you have the deluxe. Okay. In right. my case, 
You know, uh, uh, myself and some of the guys uh, that are part of the staff for, for Kiss Fever Radioactive, we bought the deluxe. Um, yeah. Can you can you elaborate a bit? So, what's the, what are the main differences between the two? Sure. Uh, the standard edition, like you described, is is the 550 page hardcover, full glossy, uh, loaded with all the information and photos. That's the standard edition, and that's what you, what you get for a hundred dollars. Okay, which just just to make this point, a 550 page hardcover book to sell for only a hundred dollars is a bargain. Exactly. That, exactly. I mean, I could easily, I, I should charge 150 just for that, but sure. I didn't want to because I want to try to keep things hopefully more affordable than less affordable. Mm -hmm. Plus, mm -hmm. I, I already knew that it was going to cost a lot to ship it yeah, outside ship of the it. Right. So, uh, but the deluxe edition which is $150, you get another 100-page book in addition to the 550-page book. You get a soft cover book, which is specifically about the Kiss Meets the Phantom mm -hmm. okay. movie. Okay. That's what that 100 pages is about. Uh, the, the amount of information and details about how that movie was put together, uh, every day filming the scenes and, and who was involved and what, and all the photos. And this is uh, the same approach, information and photos, the same exactly. thing. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you get that, but you also get a, um, an 18 by 24-inch uh, poster of a very unique, amazing uh, illustration by a French uh, artist named Stéphane Martinez. Okay. You go, Steph Martinez. Um, last year, hopefully, KISS fans will remember some of his artwork because he put together these amazing illustrations to combine Star Wars yeah, and Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, the Darth Vader Gene Simmons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's the one doing this artwork. And so uh, he and I collaborated on how we could make um, a, a great image that would incorporate not just the original four, but all six, right? Oh. Including Penny and Eric. Okay. And make it in a way that didn't look too busy yeah. or um, confusing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looked unified and special. Okay. So I think we figured out a pretty good way to make that happen. So you, if you go to the website, you'll be able to see that poster as well. Okay. And then on top of that, you get 11 uh, oversized trading cards. So think about the... Um, the Donruss trading cards from yeah. 78, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but now they're now they're 9 by 12, right? Nice. So with, the, with the borders and unique photos. Um, and that's there. that's photos from the filming of the of the movie? No, no, no. No, the photos in this card are we have one photo to represent each of the of the years from 83, uh, 73 uh, to 83. Okay. Right? Gotcha. It's 11 cards, right? So okay. the case of all the way to 83. Okay. So gotcha. you have one image that represents each year. Okay. Okay. I, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And so, um, you know, all the different costume looks. So did most people buy the deluxe or the standard uh, uh, version? By far, the deluxe. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not even a close competition. Okay? Really? Oh, boy. It, it, it's, I think it's like, you know, like six to one. Six to one ratio? Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. Uh, most of the, de uh, the, the deluxes are almost gone. I think we only had, out of a 1,000 we started with, we only have 116 left. Okay. So and just, just to remind people that we started the pre-orders uh, back at the beginning of July. Mm -hmm. So it's been, you know, August, September, October, three months, and we're almost out of the deluxe editions. Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, there's, there's, you know, we have a lot more of the standard editions left because they, they haven't sold as much as the deluxe. Mm -hmm. So we have about, um, I don't know, 2,600 of the standard editions. Okay. But once the, once the deluxe is sold out uh, and the book is actually, you know, printed, I feel... I feel pretty sure, and of course, keep my fingers crossed anyway, that we should be able to sell the rest of those. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And this, you know, this is this is uh, normally what happens with with books like this. I remember um, when uh, Seal with a Kiss" from Lydia uh, came out. That's exactly what happened. You know, at the beginning, of course, there, there was the diehard, you know, fans 
that they knew what the book was about, they, they kind of, they, they purchased it. But then over the years, many, many more people, you know, came on board because, you know, uh, you know, there was so much, you know, good comments about it. And I'm sure that this is going to be the same. So there's no, um, for, for, the, for the release in, in, let's say, February, March, there's no um, deadline or, or due date in order to place orders. So people can continue to place orders with you anytime. Absolutely right. Yeah, as long as there's supplies last, you can, you can place an order. Cool, cool, cool. This is great. This is great. Um, Ross, you know, uh, I, 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 had a, I had a sheet of paper with, with some questions, so we basically covered them all, but we went, you know, you know, we went far. And so with all the details that you're giving us, you know, you're, we're getting really, really excited. You know, it's, it's awesome. So you were saying you're, you're a musician. So uh, what, uh, are you playing a band? You, you, what, what, what instrument do you play? I uh, actually uh, started on drums, but I learned to play guitar and piano as well. Okay. And I'm a music teacher. That's that's my actual uh, occupation. I teach private lessons here in my studio. Okay. I teach drums, guitar, and piano. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I don't play in a band right now, uh, mainly because I'm concentrating on finishing the book. Okay. Um, but I played in many many bands in the past. Uh, basically, just cover bands. You know, I've never I've never been in a band where we've done like a a full album or anything like that just just cover bands kind cool. of thing cool that's nice that's nice i love yeah. it i love the uh you know you have a, an electronic drum set there what would you say roland the one that you have uh yeah that's my yeah that's my roland B, b10 okay which um was one of the early roland electronic kits that came out i think i bought that way back in uh like 1998 or something 99 something like that and it still works it's amazing man yeah that's a good that's a good one that's a good set <laughs> That's yeah, it's got a lot of good okay. sounds and a good, um, a lot of, it's got a good feel. It's got mesh heads. Yeah, that's uh, right. And then from mesh heads, so you can tune them, get a certain um, rebound off them. So and then so yeah, like, your, your arms, you know, you don't get stiff, you know, you don't get tired. So. I, yeah. <laughs> the newer ones have, the symbols are more like, they look like actual symbols. Yeah, yeah. Moved. Yeah, I've Those are the original, just rubber pads that they had good. to begin with. But I use it, you know, every day that I teach and uh, it still works great. Beautiful, beautiful. Ross, um, anything else that you would like to to add to our conversation? Anything else you would like to say? Um, you know, towards the end of the interview, I was going to ask you to to send your greetings to all the KISS fans in, in, in South America and especially in Argentina for uh, KISS Fever Radioactive. But feel free, go ahead. Uh, if you want, If you want to say something else about the book, you know, this is our time. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, the first thing I might do is go ahead and just uh, let everybody know what the what the URL, the website where you can place the order. Okay. Um, and you know, it's 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 a, the full title of the book, basically, Magic Kiss Chronicles, Chronicles with a K at the beginning, mm -hmm. nineteen seventy three to nineteen eighty three dot com. Okay, easy, right? easy and, one. We're gonna we're gonna put it on the video, so that's gonna be good too. And you can always, you know, uh, on Facebook, you can always go to the actual Magic um, Facebook okay. page. That's right. And, of course, there's a link right there. Okay. Uh, and I, I do want to point something out about the title of the book because it's, uh, as it's been going on, it seems like people think the, the full title or the title of the book is the whole thing. The, the title of the book is actually just Magic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But the Kiss Chronicles 1973 to 1983 – is you know the subtitle so for example the the title of nothing to lose that that you picked up before the full title is not nothing to lose that's just that's the main title right. the making of kiss seven, 1972 to 1975 correct yes but nobody ever uses that when that's they true. talk about that's the true book, huh? that's true so you have the words there you know that's yeah. right exactly yeah yeah, yeah. well what, you know you see the cover of when you see the cover of Magic, you'll see the big letters just says Magic. Yeah. And then underneath it, Kiss Chronicles 1973 to 1983. Yeah. Yeah. As it is with pretty much all, you know, all books that come out, they have a main title and then a small little mm -hmm. descriptory type thing. Do you have, Ross, like the uh, just rare handy next to you? You have the cover to show in the... Uh... Yeah. Um, um, and I'll point out that 
Let's see if I can hold this up good yeah. for everybody. Oh, that's that's great. Okay, that was magic good. is really big. Yeah. <laughs> right. Kiss Chronicles 1973 to 1983, right? And you got the different uh, icons mm -hmm. uh, that I drew for each of the the six people involved. The in members. This, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. The original mm -hmm. four. So um, and, and then these are the studs there. Okay. Right. Those are the metal studs that will be. You'll be able to actually touch them. You know, it'll it'll be uh, embossed on the actual cover. Okay. This is just a little um, sample booklet that uh, we put together when we went. Uh, by the way, when I say we, I mean myself and the amazing designer Scott Davis. Okay. Right. So he and I worked on putting these spreads together that you that you see in the book. Okay. Right. And uh, so here we see uh, the uh, the. The Paul uh, Lind uh, show there, okay. There you go, right? And that's so, you watching TV? Don't tell me that's you watching TV. No, it's not <laughs> me watching TV. <laughs> but that's, you know, those kinds of things, like you like you talking about like that, that picture right there, the addition of those kind of things into the design, that's straight out of Scott Davis's amazing creativity and the fact that he and I really have the same type of vision okay. for how this book should look, yeah. right? It should be fun. Yeah. Because this is fun. This is fun. This right. is fun. That's right. Yeah. And we've seen so many books, you know, with photos that um, I wouldn't say they are boring, but, you know, you need something more. And I agree with you that, you know, it's, if it's more fun, you, you see what happened when you show me those pics. So I, I just grabbed, you know, the one in the middle. I said, wow, this is something different. This is really fun. This is, this is uh, unique. This is unique. Right. So that's where every spread, everything that we're doing for this book, um, you know, has part of our personalities mm -hmm. in it. Okay. And it's not, it's not just slapped together. See, that's, and that's one of the things that's different that really only a fan could do a book like this. If you hire somebody who's a designer and you give them all the photos and you give them, you know, all the information, they'll do a good job, you know, putting things together. Like history, the history book, for example, was designed, I think, by a lady named Susan McCowan. Okay. And, um, but she's... She wasn't, she's not a kiss she's fan. Not a fan. She's not a fan. That's right. No. So, but nothing, not taking anything away from her designing skills, but there are certain things that only a kiss fan yeah. would think to do. Absolutely. Okay? So that's, that's a big part of this. So I'm, I'm, I gotta say, man, how, how blessed and lucky I was, uh, to find Scott Davis. That's right? great. And, and, you know, when I did the Kickstarter back in 2015, um, uh, near about halfway through, he contacted me and he said, "Man, I'm I'm excited about this book idea you have, and I'm a designer. Um, you know, I'd like to help you with the designing." And as soon as we got to talking, man, I I just knew right away this guy is the right guy for the job. He's also and, a big Kiss fan. Scott. Oh yeah, he's amazing. He, okay. And you know, in addition, this is the way it is with really good working um, relationships. I think. More than just being, you know, having a common interest in the one thing you're working on, having a similar sense of humor, right? Mm -hmm. A similar kind of disposition, um, you know, being being thoughtful and calm and all, you know, a lot of different things go into it. And then uh, he and I are both a fan of a lot of other kinds of music, not just Kiss, okay. right? So we, we can share, um, you know you know, fun things and conversations mm -hmm. and it makes the whole working relationship um, just as about as, as good as you could ever hope for. Well, the, as, as you said before, so uh, you, you've been really blessed, you know, by, by oh. this because, you know, uh, always working with someone else, it's it's not easy. And, you know, with all the, all the time that you were putting into this, that you were investing in this in this book, uh, imagine if you were working with someone that, you know, doesn't get along with you too well, it, it makes things much, much harder. Yes. Yeah. Button heads on. So it's hard enough just to create something together and share a common viewpoint um, and goal. Uh, but if your personalities clash, 
Yeah, it's it makes it makes it makes it, makes it really tough. tough. So yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, absolutely. you know, in bands, you know, like everybody knows all the different problems with mm -hmm. the personalities and Kiss, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, you know, it, you just feel really lucky when you when you can connect with somebody and things line up. So, uh, um, I you know, I love Scott Davis. He's I hope you know he gets the chance to um, uh, get known in the Kiss community. You know, from this that because you don't you don't, you don't love him like I do because he's great. Yeah, you know, I I think you know um um with all the work that you guys have been doing uh, since the kickoff of, of the of the project and actually with all the promotion, I have I have absolutely no doubts that this is going to be a huge success and this is just the beginning for you guys. I think it's going to be great and this is actually something that. All of us were were anxiously waiting. You know, everybody's you know look. We're we're basically counting days. You know, it's uh, everybody's <laughs> like, okay, Feb. You know, February. You know, please don't delay. You know, or anything. <laughs> no, I understand completely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm grateful for all that. And one thing I definitely also want to say is how how happy and thankful I am that uh, the Kiss fans have taken it upon themselves to spread the word around, right, and to help. You know. Because that word of mouth thing is is better than anything. Yeah, uh, but you know, I think that makes a huge difference, Ross, between this project and 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 other things that you can buy. But you know, in this case, in I, I'm gonna, you know, my my uh, my take on this is that I I was feeling that I was part of something. You know, right. like you know, uh, putting your money there, you know, in order to enable something to happen. It makes you part of it, you know. It's not something that you buy out of the shelf. It's you know you become part of a family. That's what it is. I look at it that way too. And one of the things that I've done that I don't know that I don't know how many people really consider this, but I've made myself really, really available on Facebook. And you know, uh, anybody who's ordered the book or has a question about the book, um, I answer it if at all possible within the hour. I make an effort to yeah. not, you know, wait, a, you know, two days or a week. Yeah. I try to, I try to make sure that each person understands that I appreciate them. Yeah. Okay. And it, think of, I think of it like this, you know, when, um, when Kiss was starting off, uh, you know, Gene especially, he really understood how important it was to connect with the fans mm -hmm. and take time mm -hmm. for all mm -hmm. the fans. Right, even when they were nobodies, right, yeah. right, and they're trying to build it up, and they did a great job, I think, over the years, with maintaining that, right. Even when they got really big, I think you know um, they cared about the fans a lot. And I remember there's a there's a great Paul Stanley interview um, around the time that the solo albums came out, right. And some interviewer asked him, um, "Don't you ever get get tired of all this, you know, screaming?" teenagers or something and he goes every screaming teenager is different yeah and when i'm when i'm when i'm interacting with them they're, they're the only one that matters it's true and i think for um even though obviously you know this book has, is nowhere near the level of you know an actual band and you know putting out a, a music and playing concerts and stuff i i really do believe in the the personal connection and being kind to people and trying to um, be considerate and um, attentive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, um, and, and we and we can feel that. And this is actually this uh, this time that you're spending with us. Uh, this interview. It's it's proof of what you're saying. You know, uh, normally you don't have access to to people who are so busy. You know, uh, putting up stuff for fans. And uh, and the, and they're willing to share you no know, stories and your time over the weekend. This is great. So you know, I I really uh, Ross, I have you know no words to thank you. You know so much. You know uh, uh, from from the bottom of my heart. I'm and I'm not only talking about myself. You know I'm talking about on behalf of you know all the Kiss fans in in Latin America and actually the staff for, for from uh, Kiss Super Radioactive. Because you know we were we were so looking forward for this interview, and it just happened like that. Boom! I got in contact with you no more than a week ago, and here we are. So this is great. So we want to thank you so much for that, uh, Ross. 
You're welcome. You're very welcome, Claudio. It's wonderful. You're a sweetheart, and um, I'm glad to have this time to get to talk to you. Thank you so much. So, uh, uh, you know, just to wrap it up, uh, as I said before, I'm going to, you know, uh, formally invite you. If you're ever in Canada, you know, uh, Montreal, whatever, so please, you know, come to my place. We're going to have supper together. We're going to have fun. We're going to drink wine. We're going to listen to Kiss. I'm going to show you my stuff, and we're going to have a lot of fun. And, you know, having said that, if you want to kind of send a couple of words to our fans in Argentina and Kiss Fever Radioactive, I will really appreciate that. Gladly. Hello to all the fans in Argentina and Kiss, uh, Kiss Me Radioactive. Uh, I love you guys and I appreciate the support so much. And uh, this, is, this is just the beginning. I hope that uh, once the book is, is a reality and holding it in your hand, hopefully it will bring you all the happiness and joy um, that I could possibly put into it. And um, onward and upward. There you go. It will certainly will. This uh, this book is awesome, and uh, you know we're gonna spread the news on our uh, Facebook page. You know, with all of our fans in 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 all the Kiss armies in Latin America, not only Argentina, but you know we have friends in Bolivia, Chile, Brazil, you know Colombia, and I'm sure that uh, you're gonna have a lot of success down there too. Thank you very much. Oh, I do want to, can I point one other thing out that just came to mind? Because you mentioned it way earlier, yes. and I don't think we got to talk about the shipping prices. Yes, there you go. Go ahead. Okay, you know, listen, I wish there was something I could do to convince the U.S. Postal Service to not charge so much to ship to Argentina yeah. or to, you know, Germany or to especially like uh, Australia and even to Canada. The shipping price, I mean, here we are, it's just neighbor, yeah. and it's just ridiculous, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So I can ship something to um, uh, to Detroit for $10, but if I ship it to, you know, on Toronto, it's 65 Yeah, yeah, whatever. it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, it's just not fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I am doing everything in my power uh, to keep the prices as low as possible, Um and just just understand that the book itself, because it's 550 pages, it it weighs, it weighs, it weighs yeah. by itself. It weighs yeah. about six pounds. It's a yeah, heavy, yeah. heavy book, yeah. and that makes a difference. If I was just shipping this, yeah, that's different. Right? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, well, you know, we know, we know, uh, you know, we know that uh, this is co completely out of your hands, and uh, of course you're not making any money with shipment. This is this is ridiculous. So the only thing that I can think of, and this is something that we did, we know with some of, the, uh, of my friends here in Canada, we we got together. We know we 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 grouped, you know, in five or ten in order to have one shipment yeah. instead of having individual shipments. In this case. If we're aiming, you know, another region, like, you know, if you're going to go to Brazil or Argentina or Chile, maybe, you know, uh, uh, this is just a suggestion, you know, maybe people can get together, place an order for instead of one, two or five, ten, let's say, and they, they can actually share the shipping cost, uh, you know, uh, amongst all those people. So I, I, that's the only thing that I can think of. Yeah, and that's that's actually worked really well for people in Australia, of course, and in Europe, where they've um, they've taken the time, and in a weird way, that negative of the the high shipping cost has brought people together. Yeah, I love that idea. Absolutely, so they reach out to other Kiss fans and go, look, let's let's put this together and make it cheaper. And Absolutely, that, that's the way they've done it. And it's can you imagine, you know, fans getting together when you get the shipment, you know, and everybody opening up the book at the same time and, you know, like, oh, my God, look at this. You know, this is awesome. This is a great experience. Yeah. This so, is a great you know, in a weird way, turning something bad into a good thing, um, I'm, I'm, you know, life has a way of doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yo, you know, we'll keep in touch because, you know, as you know, the main core of, of uh, Kiss Fever is uh, based in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. And there's, uh, you know, a big potential. You know, there's many KISS fans. You know, there are KISS freaks down there. And w if there's something that we can actually put together to make it work for people to get access to your book, and at the same time, in order for you to be able to, you know, go to that region with that book, uh, we're going to, we, we can have a chat and see if we can do something for all of us. You know, it's going to be a win-win, that's for sure. 
Yeah, and I'm willing, you know, I'll, I'll be doing the actual shipping. So it's, it's, it's you know, if we're co communicating yeah. and you need it done a certain way, then I'll be the one to make that happen. There you go. Right? There you go. You know, we, we have I'm putting it off on somebody else, and I'm glad to help any way that I can. There you go. We know that. So, uh, Russ, okay, so final words. Thank you very much again. We yeah. love you so much. Thank you for everything that you're doing for us, and uh, we'll keep in touch, okay? Sounds great. Thanks, Thanks for the opportunity, Claudio. Take good care, work. Ross. Have a good weekend. Take care. <laughs> Bye now. Bye.